The first stage of meditation involves the learning of methods, techniques for bringing about mindfulness. The most simple and most commonly used technique is the watching consciously of the rising and falling of the breath. We use this technique to anchor us to the present moment. While we do watch the breath with awareness, we watch it with a light, calm awareness that is not overly focused. We do not want to become tense. We also don't want to lose track of the tool that we're using to cultivate mindfulness. So we must find a happy medium in concentration. The first stage of meditation also involves the disciplinary integration of techniques for mindfulness into our daily life. One who hopes to attain meditative awareness must commit to meditating for a certain amount of time, in a certain way, at a certain time, every day. One should be extremely strict about following through, because the very part of the mind that we wish to tame through meditation will come up with increasingly better excuses for why we shouldn't go on with our practice. We might say that we have a headache, so we're going to skip today's session. Or we're in a state of mind that is not very calm, so we won't be very productive. This is all a bunch of bullshit. The best meditation, the most productive meditation, is done when the mind wants to wander. Because meditation truly is not just mindfulness, but noticing when the awareness, when the mindfulness is lost, and gently moving back to the center. When we notice our mind all over the place with wild thoughts that have nothing to do with anything and we become discouraged by this the feeling of discouragement is in fact a defense mechanism of the very behavioral patterns of the very ego that we wish to tame So the necessity for extreme discipline and extreme commitment is obvious. Not just in terms of setting the day-to-day -day routine, but in terms of any given session. 
That is, if the plan is to sit a certain way and use a certain technique for 15 minutes. Once one begins that meditation, under no circumstances should one abort the mission until it is truly over. One may notice five minutes in that the nose starts to itch uncontrollably and we feel like we'll die if we don't cave and scratch it. The mind may even start to play more complex tricks, making us feel that we've left the stove on. I have seen people go into intense coughing jags very suddenly. People who showed no previous signs of illness or allergies. I've seen many similar types of behavior by this internal child that wants out of doing the work. The taming of this child is the first stage of meditation. And it should be known that the reason most people don't get very far when they take on the yoga of meditation is because of how compelling this internal child can be. The trick is to not identify with it because then we cannot feel bad or discouraged when it pulls the mindfulness away. And instead of punishing the mind when it makes an error, when it loses its awareness, we should use positive reinforcement, just the way we would with with our own child, like a like a mother would with with her own child. Don't focus on any other aspect. I would advocate not focusing on any other aspect or any other teaching about meditation besides what I've outlined here. The technique is not very relevant, especially in the beginning. As long as the technique is meant to encourage mindfulness. It's probably a good idea to begin with the, the watching of the rising and falling of the breath and the gentle pull back into the present moment when we notice our lost awareness. Along with that, it is important to uh, be committed, or rather to display commitment um, to be relentless with our self-discipline. And we must not identify with the part of the self that we are trying to tame. Other than that, it's all bells and whistles as far as I'm concerned.